Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Sorry for my cat. She has severe attachment issues, so I don't think we'll be able to get through this video without her. But anyway, welcome back for another video. So today in our video, we have two very exciting topics. <laughs> so firstly, what, this, what today's video is actually about. Today's video is going to be all about res. So I have never been in res, not at OP or anywhere else, but I did ask a few of my friends who are in res to just give me the basics of what goes on in there because a lot of people have asked me about res at OP, what it's like, uh, different facilities and things that are there. So I've just decided to do this video as a bit of an information session. I know a lot of people have also asked for a tour of the residence, but unfortunately with the COVID regulations, being fairly strict and also changing a lot in the past few weeks honestly i have no idea when i'll be getting back to campus and if i do get to campus if i'll be able to do a tour for you guys if i do then i will definitely be making a video about it if it takes forever to be able to do that i might ask one of my friends in res to do that but it is definitely something that i'm trying to work on then the second thing for today's video which i am so excited about is that my Littman stethoscope arrived, I think yesterday or the day before, I can't even remember, sorry. But uh, this is this is unconditional love, okay? My dog doesn't love me as much as my cat does. But anyway, so I am so excited. I have waited so long to be able to get a stethoscope and now I was able to get a Littman one, which is really amazing. And it has taken all my self-control to not attack the package and rip it open and take it out and test it on my little kitty. Um, Carla is not going to be in this video unfortunately, she has gone to the farm with my boyfriend and I'm so upset with both of them for leaving me behind. But anyway, I've got my cat, her name is Princess, I don't think any of you have met her but this is Princess, she loves me more than life itself and I love her even more. So anyway, let's get into today's video which is all about Rez. So we're just going to start with the basics. So firstly, RES is obviously on campus. You have three different, I feel like, living arrangement type things. So there are corridors, then there are houses and flats. Honestly, I'm not sure what the difference is between houses and flats. And then obviously corridors are basically, you know, you have a building and then you have the corridor with a bunch of rooms. There is no room sharing at OP, so everyone has their own room, which is amazing, I feel. And then each of the corridors also have their own sort of like um, lounge area, sort of general public, you know, relaxation lounge area. Then also a kitchen and also their own laundry room. I'm not sure if it's a laundry room per corridor or per building, but yeah, each corridor or building has their own laundry room. It is also really chilled at OP compared to all the other reses that I've heard about. OP is really chilled with basically all of their rules. And also with like laundry, you don't have to do it in your laundry room, you can take it to any one of them. Then there is also a cafeteria where they serve food at certain times. Um, at this moment the times are a little bit all over the place and not very set, also not the same as what they usually are because of COVID and certain restrictions and regulations and stuff. But there is food at certain times, you basically just show up and get food if you want to, you don't if you don't want to. Really it's all up to you, which I feel is a really great arrangement. And then there is breakfast, lunch and dinner, but for lunch and dinner apparently it's the same menu. Then you can also just have your food in your own room. I know that the rooms are allowed to have a microwave and a fridge, so a lot of people, they really just have their basic stuff in their rooms. And then you just have to wash your own dishes, obviously, but there is also breakfast, lunch and dinner serving times. There is also a small shop where you can just buy basic things like, I don't know, basic food items. I'm guessing that there would also be stuff like toothbrushes and things. I've never actually seen the shop, but I just hear that there is a shop where you can buy all of your basics. So that is really useful. Then uh, OP also has its own gym, but you do have to pay monthly to be able to use it. Then they also have a swimming pool. Sorry, she is just putting her full weight into my hand with her head. But anyway, there is also a swimming pool, there are rugby fields, hockey fields, netball fields, uh, volleyball court, I think I named everything. I might have even missed something. 
Then also there is stuff like the open riding club, the rock climbing club, um, the cycling club, stuff like that, which isn't going on at the moment. But, you know, there are a bunch of sporting clubs also on campus that is not, you know, exclusively for res, but it is also something that you could use as a res student, obviously. Then there are also like morning runs. I think at the moment there are Friday morning runs at six o'clock in the morning where you can go run or walk or whatever you want to do. So there are a lot of sporting opportunities um, and, you know, stuff that you can use if you have an active lifestyle, which I definitely do not. So this is my happy space sitting here on a comfortable chair talking to myself with my cats. But anyway, for the people who like those things, they are there for you. I did ask about certain times like lights out. Uh, certain any regulation times like at this time this happens at this time this happens everyone has to do this at this time as far as I can tell there is absolutely none of that which I feel is unusual I mean I've never stayed at res but for everything that I've heard since I was in high school and then on main campus of all the different reses there um, I've never heard them be this chilled usually there are certain times that certain, that certain things have to happen there are certain regulations one of my friends did say that there are quiet times though, so basically you can still go on and do whatever you want, you're just supposed to be quiet. I think it's something like between 12 and 4, but I'm not 100% sure. But other than that, it sounds like it's just a kind of do what you want type thing. For the rooms, like I said, there is no room sharing, so everyone has their own private room. For flats and houses, you also share the flat or the house with other people, but you still have your own private rooms. Then there is the basic furniture in there, so there is a basic desk with a chair and a single bed. I think there is also um, some cupboard space and a built-in closet, I think. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I saw one of my friend's rooms the other day and I'm trying to remember what it looked like. Sorry for the background noise, my cat is scratching because I don't have a scratching post for her in my apartment. Then you are, uh, like I said, you're also allowed to have a fridge and a microwave in your room but you're not allowed to have a stove. I don't know how strict they are on this rule, but I know that the, that the actual rule is that you are not allowed to have a stove. Pretty sure it's for safety reasons, but that is all that I know so far. Then there are also obviously communal bathrooms uh, for each corridor. There is also a bit of variation between the different corridors. There are like fancier corridors that have fewer rooms, but then some of the fancier rooms might have sinks. Um, I know that they're busy renovating res at the, well, not at the moment, but they're like in the general process of renovating all of res. So there is older buildings, newer buildings, renovated buildings, then also the houses and flats. So I know some of the fancier rooms, you have a sink in the room. Then uh, for also like the fancier corridors, there are less rooms and then more bathrooms and then sort of like a larger lounge and stuff area. So basically just a bit more space for all the people. Uh, then on the topic of pets, unfortunately there are no pets allowed in res, so that is literally the reason that I am not in res because my cat at the moment actually usually stays with my parents, so that is fine, but my dog, if you guys don't know my dog, she is extremely attached to me, and yeah, so I cannot leave her, also because she is my dog, so I, I'm not just going to ship her off to someone, so she has to stay with me, and since I do not allow pets in res, I cannot just leave her, so I have to stay in private accommodation, which I don't complain about. I am a very private person and I can't imagine coping in res with all the different people. But luckily, if you are on res, then you literally have all the animals on campus that you can see and deal with every single day. So there are the sheep, the cattle, the pigs, goats, uh, the horses, and then also... Oh yeah, and there are feral cats that, you know, sort of just around on campus. If you're on main campus, there are also feral cats feral cats there, I'm sure that you would have seen them, and then obviously also the beagles, which is a big favorite for everyone, so you don't have a shortage of animals if you're staying in res at the veterinary campus, but you're not allowed to bring your own animals, I know people have also asked me about this, if you have your own horse, you know, if you're allowed to stable it at OP, unfortunately not, there are no private animals on campus, so if you have a horse that you want to bring with, then you are going to have to rent from a private stable. As far as cost is concerned, it varies a bit between uh, be staying in an old building, staying in a new building, and then whether you have a flat or a house, it sort of goes more expensive from being an old building than a new building, and then I think then it's flats and then houses, or flats and houses are the other way around. I really don't know what's the difference with those, but apparently there is some kind of difference. But anyway, um, so it sounds like the cost is somewhere between about 50 to 60,000 rand a year. 
then you also have to pay a certain amount extra for food per year, which I cannot remember what it is at the moment, I am sorry, but that basically allows you about 150 rand a day for food. But then if you do run out of that and you just want to buy more, then you simply ask them to basically load more money onto your account and then you can spend more on food and then it is just added to your account at the end of the year. Then the last topic is room shooting. So basically how it works at OP, there isn't, as far as I can tell, a minimum requirement for being in res. Basically, if you are in vet school, then you can be in res. But then what kind of room you get, what kind of corridor you stay in, whether you have the chance of having a flat or a house depends on a few things. So obviously there is seniority. So as far as I know, houses are only for fifth and final years. So the lower years do not get those because seniority get first picks and then usually they're all gone by the time the final and fifth years have picked. So seniority plays a role. It also plays a bit of a role with, for example, the nicer rooms, the nicer corridors, the nicer buildings, all of that. Then the next big thing is obviously academics. They basically have a list for each of the years. So they have a final year list, fifth year, fourth year, third year, second year lists. And then it has, and then you're basically sorted by your academics. So if you are high on the list of, for example, the third years, then you will be the first of the third years to choose. But the final years, fifth years and fourth years will be able to choose before you. It's more or less that kind of system. Then also something that plays a big role is activities that you join. So they basically have a point system. If you are in res or trying to get into res, then you go and you attend certain activities. So it could be sporting events, it could be socials, it could be anything that they feel like uh, making a flagged event. So they call it a flagged event. And then if you're trying to get into res, you go there, you attend the event, and then they take note of it, they put down your name, and then you get a point or a certain amount of points for the event that you attended. Then your activities or the points that you earned is, com is combined with your academics. I think it's about 60% academics, 40% the point system. And then you are basically put on that list for your year, depending on how high you scored with that. So it is firstly seniority and then academics and then the point system. So I think that is all about race. That is all that I could think about and all that I could remember. So if you guys have any extra questions, if I missed anything, please just leave me a comment. I also have my email address that I will link in the description. You guys can email me at any time with any number of questions. And if I do have answers, I will answer them. So now for the most exciting part, we get to unbox my stethoscope and I'm so excited. So I don't know how my dear little princess will do with this because she doesn't like plastic and I have it here. It arrived in the mail just yesterday. So yeah, she's already, hey, she quite likes it. I am quite impressed. But anyway, let's see how it goes. I don't know if I'll be able to open it. Uh, I could see myself just struggling for 10 minutes on camera, but let's see if we can get this open. Oh, it's so beautiful. Ooh, it is so pretty. Look at it. So I got the Litman Classic 3 stethoscope. There was also the Lightweight and then Cardiology 4 or 6. I can't remember. There was a V and an I, and I can't remember if it was 4 or 6. But yeah, there was Cardiology, Classic, and Lightweight. So I got the Classic 3. I just feel like that would be what we would use the most. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. So excited. It's like getting a new toy, seriously. What is wrong with this box? Why does it not open? Oh, it is so beautiful. It is more beautiful than I thought it would be. So this is what it looks like. I got the chocolate and copper one. So all the metal parts are copper sprayed. So it's not actual copper, but it's sprayed with copper. And then it's got this chocolate brown um, rubber part. And then I did, oh, there it is. I had my name and my cell phone number also engraved on it. And it looks amazing. It is so beautiful, so professional. Oh, it is actually quite heavy. Oh, and it's so rubbery. I mean, I know that it's like rubber, but like it, it's so rubbery. <laughs> Guys, this is literally, I don't know how my orals are going to go because this is how I explain things. I don't know. I'm going to fail this year. It's going to be horrible. <laughs> oh, it is so pretty. I've never used a stethoscope before in my life. Like, I mean, through all my shadowing and everything, I've never used a stethoscope. It's so weird because this part is so heavy and then this part is so light. It is so, so light. I mean, it's barely there. And then this one is just like flopping around. Oh, sorry. 
Oui. I, I, I'm totally handling this wrong. <laughs> this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, let's see. I think it's supposed to go this way. It doesn't matter if you put it on this way or this way. Does it matter? I don't know. You guys are literally seeing me work my way through vet school. This is how I do everything. <gasps> oh my gosh, guys! Like, I just, I, I turned it around from the way that it was. So I, I put it on this way because I wasn't hearing anything and I was so confused. But I just, I touched my cat with this part and she's, I can't hear her purring, but she was purring and it was so weird. Oh my gosh, it's on like vibrations. I heard my cat vibrate. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm not done yet. This is so cool. I don't know where I'm supposed to listen for the heartbeat. We, we're supposed to smart, we're supposed to start small animal diagnostics this week. So we haven't actually done anything on how to diagnose a small animal, and that includes like where to put stethoscope to listen for stuff. So I have no idea, and I also I don't want to move her. She's really comfortable on my leg right now. So yeah, so I don't really want to move her to like listen around, but also she's purring so loudly at this point that I can't hear anything else. Okay, it was getting a bit weird because the closer I went to like her chest cavity, because I started back here and then I went here and then I went down here and it just got louder and louder, the purring. So it was actually overwhelming that last part, but oh, I am so happy. This is so cool. It is so beautiful. I am so excited. Okay, I have to calm down now. But yeah, thank you so much, Princess, for being a wonderful model for me to use and to work on. And thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Also share this video if you know of anyone who might benefit from it. And I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.